If you're tired of reinventing the gallery header wield and losing the sorting code again, you're not alone. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a gallery header component that you can drop into any app, keeping your apps cleaner, faster, and way more consistent. Let's get started. The first thing we want to do is go to component libraries. If you don't have it on this left panel, you can click more. And if you still don't have it over here, go ahead and click discover all. And in this, you should be able to see it if you scroll down on app enhancements and then component libraries. And then just click on that and go to any component library you would like to start off. And today I'm just gonna go to the buttons component library I have created last week. And you can also start this in a power app on the component tab and then import it back into a component library, uh, whichever floats your boat. Going back to the component library, we are going to start with a new component. Name this component to gal, since it is a gallery, gallery header. And then we are going to change the width to 1136, just because that's what I found most galleries in a landscape orientation is usually are. And then the height to 40. And now we are going to create uh, custom properties. The first thing we're going to create is an items and input. It's going to be a table and we'll create that. And we are going to create a font, create a font size. And this time it's going to be a number. Now we're going to do font color. And then there is that great and font hover color. It's also going to be a color. The next thing we're going to do a divider color. It's also a color. Then we are going to create on select and this is going to be an event. And now we are going to create our output properties, selected item. And this is going to be a record. The next one we are going to create a sort order and it is going to be a text, but also output. Future Isabel speaking here. I was thinking we need to reset this control in case a user navigate to another screen and then come back to this. So let's create the custom properties to reset to the default setting. So for that, I created a default item. This default item is going to be a record input. And then I also created a property called default order. So this will be the order that the selector item is going to be. And then with that, I also created a new output property. It's not really output property, but it is an action. So think of the action property types is more of like a form. There is reset form, view form, and edit form. So this is what we're trying to do. Reset the gallery header to the default setting. Now that we have all of our custom properties, so we are going to move on to the actual things. So the first thing we're going to do is add a gallery. You can either do the modern gallery or the classic gallery. I'm just going to do the blank one. So it just saves me some time to delete the other things in there. Blank horizontal gallery. And then I am going to change X to zero width to parent dot width height to parent dot height. And then the template size, we are going to delete all that and say parent dot width divided by count row of however many gallery gallery header dot items. And then just minus 10. Okay. I am going to remove the scroll bar and I do want to add the transition to a pop and then the data source. We are going to change it to whatever your component name is dot items. And then we are going to add a modern button. Okay. Future Isabel is back. I forgot to add a default property value, which is going to be whatever your component name is dot default item. Click on this. 
and then a modern button inserted. Because we're using a modern button, the modern theme will automatically get inherited to this modern button. What I would like you to do is go ahead and create a modern theme and get your font as well. Color, for this example, I would like to... Now I can see the button has changed to whatever color you have set your modern themes to and the font as well. Now we're going to go back to the components and edit some of the custom properties. So for the table, this will be the items of the gallery. And we're going to click on the item and then just paste this in. There we go. There is an order. So whichever order you would like your headers to go. And this is going to be the label and then the internal column. So when this item is selected, this would be the sorting column that the main gallery is going to go off of. All right, let's move on to font. So if you want your users or yourself to change the font, so go ahead and change to whichever font you want it to default to. And then the font size, font color. Uh, this is totally optional if your organization or this is for you, you're not using a dark mode feature, you can totally leave this off. But for now, I am going to change it to something else. So this is going to be 40% of our font hover color. And in the font hover color, I want it to be... And then our divider color, there's that. And then on select, just for testing purposes, I want to get notifi notified when an item is selected. The reason this is airing out because the select the item does not have that label. We'll just leave it be and then we are going to set the selected item values. And it is okay that it is confused. And for sort order, we are going to change it to this. It, it is going to air out because it doesn't know what's going on. Just give me a second. Select the button. Now on select, we are going to change it to this. What we're doing is when selecting this item, we are going to set this global property to this item and then set this global property to sort direction to the other direction of what it's currently on. And then we are going to execute the on select event that we created earlier. After the on select property of the button is set, all of the errors that we were encountering should be gone by right now. So on select, it's green, select the item, the squiggly line should be gone by now. Now we are going to move on to the button properties. We are just going to start from the top to bottom to make it easier. Text would be this item dot label. Icon will be this. If this item's internal column property is the same thing as the selected item property, then we are going to check if the sort order it's ascending. If it's ascending, then go up. If it is not ascending, which is now descending, and now we're going to arrow down. But if this item is not selected, then this is going to be arrow sort, which is up and down arrow. And then the icon before or after, this is totally optional. Uh, you can do before or after. And the accessibility label is this item, whatever label it is. And I'm just going to say header sorting button. I think we need a space. We'll do that. And usually it's auto aligned to center, but if it's not, we'll just double check to make sure it's in center. Vertical align, we are going to do middle. Icon rotation, we don't need that. X, we are going to be zero. Y also should be zero. For the width, it is whatever your gallery's template width is. And the height is going to be whatever the gallery height is, but minus by 10, because there is a padding in the gallery right here, the template padding. Padding should be zero. What really tie the pictures together is using the transparent type. And uh, the icon style, we are going to change it to filled to make it thicker. So the palette, if we were to take a peek, is naturally this color, unless on hover, it is going to grab button themed color. You can leave this be, or you can give the users an option to change it. If you were to give the users the option to change it, we would change the color palette, which is the base palette color to galleries font hover color. 
The base palette color is the hover color. And then the font, if you want to give your user an option to change the font, same thing with the font. And the font size, this is a no brainer. We should give the users the option to change the font size. And then the font color, so this is also optional. If you don't have dark mode or light mode, or you don't want to give the user the option to change the labeling color, then leave it at, as is. But if you do, change it to gallery header font color. And then the font weight, this is the same if statement. If this item's internal column is the same thing as the selected item's internal column, then bold, else semi-bold. And my last video I created a gradient button with the classic control. With the classic control, we needed the border style to be something other than none for the tab index color to show because we're using the modern button. It automatically does that for us without having to configure the border style to anything else besides none. So if I was to select that and tab it over, it automatically gives us a tab index color. If we're really close, so we just want to add some decorative items. We're going to add the little divider. Just make sure it is outside of the gallery. Okay. With this rectangle, we want to change the display mode to view X to 10. And then the Y would be the gallery header height and then five above it. The width would be the gallery header width minus 20 because our X starts at 10. And I want to end 10 on the right as well. The height, I want it to be a two and the color is going to be the divider color. Okay. And the border we can leave as is it's since this is not really going to show. And I want to change the tap index to zero because it is on a view only. And the other ones doesn't really matter about what color it is since it is going to be viewed only. Now we're finally done. If you would like, go ahead and just add it to your screen. Do you see that there was a little delay? I did and I did not like that. Do you see that spinny circle? I do not like that. Let's take a look. I believe there is a delay feature or something like that. Delay items loading. So let's put that to false. So let's take a peek. If we were to insert another one. Okay. There's no delay or anything. Let me change it to landscape just to make this easier. So after I changed the orientation to landscape, it messed up my other components and this component as well, a couple of height properties. So I don't recommend doing that. Okay, now I am going to insert the component back into here. So we are just going to test it out just to make sure everything is all good. After you have verified everything's looking good, then go ahead and save and publish. I already did that. It does take about three to five minutes to really publish. What I would also like to do is go to this, your solution and then select your component library and then manually Click publish. After you have waited three to five minutes, we are going to go to a, a power app. This is the same power app as my last video with the button demo. And to add the components to here, all we have to do is click on the plus icon, get more components, and just ensure the publish date is the same date you have published it and select our gallery header. It will automatically pop under library component and then select that. So here is our component. What I would like to do for a real app application is usually store app controls in the formula property in the app. So I'll copy that over and go to the app and then select formulas. We can say gallery header items equals paste. And sometimes it would give you an error. And all you have to do is add a semicolon. Now let's go back to this gallery, changing the items is set locally. I want to change this to reference the gallery header items. There you go. There is that. It will give you this error. It would go away really soon here. And now I'm going to add in my data source. For today, I'm going to be using this SharePoint list called apps where I have 
pulled in all of the inventory of all of the power apps into a SharePoint list. We'll just create a vertical gallery, no pictures or anything, something really simple. We can see this working. I am just going to add a container here, like a horizontal container. A few moments later. Now everything's perfect. So the created date, this is our date columns. And then we have environment name. We actually don't have this internal column. And same thing with owner. Owner is actually a person column. So what we are going to do on the data source is to add new columns. So let's go back to here, add columns, environment. And what I want this to be is environment name, which is a, a choice column dot value. The owner is a person column. We are going to add another column. We'll wrap it in there. We are going to call this owner. I believe owner is already a column in my SharePoint list. I will have to choose another name, which I'm going to change it to owner name dot display name. So I want it to sort it that way. We'll close that for the gallery header item because this is not the internal column name anymore. We are going to change the formula to owner name as internal column. So we have the environment. This is the new column that we have created. And we also created owner name. This is the owner. This is a person column and I'm going to sort it by the owner name. Okay. Going back to our component library. Just remember that we have something called selected item and sort order as the output property. So I will put that on the side. So we'll insert any text label. And the sort order, we can do that by, then we'll display this. There you go. Now we're in ascending order. I'm just going to add one of my custom buttons. It's the same thing. You can use a regular button and I'm just going to change it to reset. What I'm going to do is reset this gallery header. So what this will do is to reset this, your default items. So looking back at the gallery header, we have default item. I just change it to order number three. So it will be environment. And then the default order is ascending. So if I were to select to descending, right? And then on select of the reset button, it should reset to the environment. And now the magic it comes in is sorting by the column name. So we would say sort by column. So that would be our data source. And then we are going to comma header dot selected item dot internal column name by the gallery header again, sort order. And then that should do it. Let's test this out. Actually, let's make this full screen. There's that it's working. There you go. And then on reset, it should reset to this. So there is that. And there you have it. I hope this video is helpful. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon to follow for more updates.